And we're going to finish up the last part of the first article of the Creed, um, of the Apostles' Creed. And let's say this whole, the, the first article and the meeting all together. So everybody say it with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he's given me my body, soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me against from all evil. All of this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all of this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Um, and you'll understand why I have all the alls highlighted here in a little bit. At, if you look at the central thought, take about three minutes at your tables in your groups and go through that. No one is self-sufficient. Uh, each one of us receives life and support as a gift from the outsiders of ourselves. In gratitude of Christians, uh, is gratitude of Christians different than that of those who do not know God and their gracious Father? So talk about that, especially this week as we celebrate as a nation um, being grateful for all that we have. And then look up Matthew 14 and uh, talk about what that's all about. So take about three minutes, four minutes to do that.
Question, what are some things that, well, um, what are some examples of God's generosity in my life? Um, obviously, we want you to think about that a lot. Um, and what I would like you to do, whenever you're celebrating Thanksgiving with your family, just before you start the email and you say your prayer, just mention some things that you're very thankful for uh, that God has given to you. Now, I hope you all say, the kids in here, oh, uh, God gave me my parents. I hope you say that. In other words, I want you to say that. <laughs> because they, they are God's gift to you. But everything else that God has given to us, um, and that we do that. Now, does anybody know, a little side note here, when the first, who was the first president, and when was the first public proclamation <laughs> as a nation that we are to give thanks? Does anybody know which president that was? Who made that, that the first as we're going to do this for time till eternity. Uh, it's Lincoln. And what was happening when Lincoln was president of the war? Civil War was going on, which, if you understand anything about the Civil War, it was not a very good time in our nation. And yet, Abraham Lincoln said, we need to set a time aside, and I think he says on this third or fourth Thursday of the month of December, as a nation, we want to pause and give thanks for all the blessings that God has given to us in our nation. And if you know anything about the Civil War, it's very dark days um, uh, in our nation back then. Because we didn't know what was going to happen. Was our nation going to survive? Was it not going to survive? Uh, and uh, I think that was 1863 uh, when he made that first proclamation. And ever since, uh, we have done that. And 
you know, whether it's good or bad, whatever, whatever how are the times are going, we can always be thankful uh, for God's generosity to us in that we can celebrate that as well. All right, question number 140. Why does the catechism use the word nine or word all nine times uh, in the catechism? And if you notice, I had gone through. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to highlight in this on page whatever page that is all the alls in the explanation. So go through and just circle them, highlight them, underline them. And what does the word all mean? All means all, all creatures, all my members, all my senses, all that I have, all that I need. He defends me against all danger, against all evil, all this he does out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy without a merit and worthiness in me. And for all of this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve, and obey him. So for all these things that we are to be grateful as uh, we say here, the emphasis of the completeness of God's creative work is in another way of saying that God created the heavens and the earth. He has given to us all these things. Everything comes from God and his blessings. And you have the Bible passages there as well. Question 141. What is the significance of confessing that God did all of this out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, mercy without any merit or worthiness to me? God, and this is great, underline, highlight these answers. God did not have to create the world. He created it freely out of love. Remember, the Trinity had been existing since eternity. It was great. It was glorious. There was no problems whatsoever. And yet, the Trinity decided, hey, why don't we create the world, and the universe, and everything therein? It was all done out of love, out of love for you, out of love for me. God didn't look at us in the future and say, oh, they're going to be mighty fine people, so we should do this. No, it was all out of love. He just did it because he loves us, as Psalm 136 says. Let it be, God created each one of us and mercifully sustains us in spite of our sinfulness. Because of our sin, we deserve nothing. I'm going to get that in the Lord's Prayer uh, in in couple months here as we go through that but you know he does this in spite of us in spite of our sinfulness of all the times we do we go against god god still loves us and still gives us these gifts because of his love for us let us see life in this world remains a good gift even when we feel that life is no more of a curse than a gift more of a burden than a delight more cheerful than joyful we have to see that all of this is God's gift to us. The good times and the bad times. I always can say, you got to go through the bad times, you know, when the good times are here. you got to see, oh, as Paul would often mention, I know what it means to be in want, and I know what it means to have abundance. And both those times, I'm always thankful for everything that we have that uh, God gives to us, and that God continues to bless us, uh, with everything he's given to us. So we're thankful for all these things as we look at them. And then letter D, creation and redemption are bound closely together. It is by God's goodness and mercy that we were created. It is by God's goodness and mercy that we are made new again in Christ. Solely by God's love for you and for me did he bring Adam and Eve into existence and eventually to you and me as well. And he does that purely out of his goodness, his mercy. And he still does that. When, men, when Adam and Eve fell into sin in Genesis chapter 3, oh, God says, all right, we got to fix this. And he says, I'm going to send my son, and he will take the sins that you have committed upon himself, and he will suffer and die for them on the cross so that your sins would be forgiven. He does that out of his love for us, his mercy, his grace. Not anything that we deserve it. In fact, we don't deserve anything from God. If we deserve anything is his wrath and punishment. But out of his love for us that he does that for you and for me. So as you sit around the Thanksgiving table, whatever day that might be this week coming up, realize that God doesn't owe this to you. It's a gift. It's always given, and more importantly, the people sitting around that table, those people who are sitting around, your loved ones, 
Those are God's gift to you, as you are a gift to them. Better act like a gift to them. Um, but you are God's gift to them, as they are God's gift to you as well. All right, question 142. Why do we say that it is our duty to thank and praise, serve and obey? It's our duty. This is what we should be doing. It's really our it's a result of the faith that we have, that Christ has given to us, that God has given to us, that we believe and trust in everything he's done for us. We want to do this because that's what God has done for us. And we do this. It is only right and proper for creatures to respond to the gifts of their creator in word, thank and praise, and deed. Highlight that. Highlight that. Star. It's our response to what God has given to you and to me. Yes. We thank and praise. We say it out loud. But we also live it as well as we serve and obey. We serve and obey him because of what he's done for us. Um, the gospel reading for this, for today, is the parable of the talents. Not really, I, well, whatever. But the three servants, the same servants, they're, they're, they all work for the master. Same master. One gets five, one gets two, and one gets one. And the first two enthusiastically go out and they work those talents. And they earn five and two more. They come back. And the, and the, the, the master says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with little. Because of that, you're going to receive more. But to the one who received one, what did he do with it? He buried it. He was not faithful. He didn't see the joy in the gift that God has given to him. And so what did he do? Nothing. And God says, okay, you didn't do anything with it. You're going to get nothing too. You're going to receive God, my punishment, and be cast out uh, of the kingdom. And so we have to remember all these things are gifts from God. Be thankful for them. And then not only that, that we show our thanksgiving in what we say and what we do for others as well. Question 143, how do I thank and praise God? I thank God by expressing my gratitude for all that he has done for me. Read Psalm 118, verse 1 with me. Read that one. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. And thank the Lord, for he is always good. Always, in everything. Now, we might not think it at the time, but it's always good. The Lord is always good to us, no matter what he gives to us, that we can be thankful for that. Letter B, I praise God by proclaiming and praising his works, the works of his hands, whatever that is. Obviously, the big work that Christ did for us was dying on the cross for our sins, for our salvation, that we receive that forgiveness, that eternal life, and that salvation from God because what he has done for us. And we thank him and praise for that. But not only that, we thank and praise him for each and every day of our lives and everything we have in it. Now, I'm very thankful for this sweater. Does anybody want to take a guess how old this sweater might be? This, I'm 58 years old. How old do you think this sweater might be? 30. 30. I, I figure it's somewhere between 35 and 40 years old. Woohoo! It's one of my favorite sweaters. I don't know how long it's going to last. But I love this sweater. Now, I have many more newer sweaters I enjoy. But this, you know, I love this one. I love this. And, you know, God provided this for me. Provided it for me that I get to wear this, these, this sweater for today. And uh, um, in, in doing all that. Remember, God gives you clothes. He gives you, as we read, meat and drink, house, home, land, animals, all that I have. Family, friends, all of them is all a gift from God. And with that. Now, we also do that. I thank and praise God as I worship with fellow believers within my daily routines. See the daily prayers. A whole bunch of day, which is part of the prayers that we would say now. Um, which I'm very thankful because I know that we do this at Central, and I hope before every meal that you say a prayer of thanksgiving for what God has placed before you. And at the end of every meal, you thank God for the, the things that God has provided for you. 
It's always a constant reminder of where all this came from. Yes, I went to I have a job. I earned money. I went and bought these things. But ultimately, it all comes from God himself. And that we would do this as we gather together for worship. One of the things we do in worship is thank and praise God for all that he's done for us. For all that he's done for us. Uh, I haven't mentioned this in a while, but I know this class will be different. Um, but there have been some of our recent compromises. When I mean recent, I mean the third Sunday in May, 2023. We saw them at confirmation, and some of them we have not seen since. Hmm. Now... Yes, they are accountable for that, but I really blame the parents as well. I'm talking to the parents here. That you must make sure that you make worship a priority in your child's life. If you make it an option, when they grow up, eventually they might make God an option. No, we don't want that. I can't imagine what else I would be doing on Sunday morning. Well, I wouldn't have a job, so... But I still would, you know, even if I wasn't a pastor, I would still come to worship to receive the gifts that God has given to me. And what a great gift that is. That I have the forgiveness of all my sins. I have eternal life and salvation. And then all those other blessings that God gives to me as well. And that we can gather together and thank God as a group, as a family of Christians, all the blessings that God has given to us. Now, question 144. How do I serve and obey God? I serve and obey God when I use all these gifts within the various walks of life, vocation, your calling, whatever that is. For you children, you're, you're called to be a student right now. You're also called to be a child of your parents. And if they ask you to do something, do it. You parents, you are parents in whatever other vocations or callings that you have in life. Uh, and we do that for my well-being and that of my neighbor and the wider creation. God puts me into a network of relationships with people around me whom I call to serve. God gives me freedom to pursue, pursue my uh, vocations in accord with the skills and aptitudes that he has given me. Now, we went, obviously we're going through that with the Ten Commandments, but also in the table of duties, uh, in that part of the um, catechism there, this table of duties talks about everything that God gives to us. All these people in our lives. Talks about government. Talks about, uh, the. I like to say, the butcher and the baker. And all that goes along with that. In the church that I was baptized in, Our Savior Lutheran Church in Detroit, Michigan, there was a huge wood carving on the wall. I still picture it. And on this wood carving, it's at Trinity Downtown now. In whatever room, the Dowell Room. When you're there, go look for it. There's a huge wood carving, and it has all these different professions. There's a policeman up there, a doctor, a nurse, a baker, a fisherman, a construction worker, and pastor, and all that kind of stuff. And I can remember sitting in church one day. The pastor was droning on. Blah, 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 blah. So I'm looking. And I'm looking, and I went, Huh. All those carvings of all those people on there, come to find out, they were all members of the church. And all of a sudden, I'm looking around going, and the guy sitting here goes, he just smiles, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> and on the bottom of it is a quote from St. Paul. Whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. I must have been like six at the time. I learned a very important lesson that whether that guy was a policeman or the butcher or a construction worker or worked in the office, no matter what he did, he was doing it for the Lord. Yeah, the pastor was up there. Hey, the pastor was called by God. But we're all called by God to do our various vocations, whatever that is. Whatever you parents, whatever you do, God has called you to that. Whatever you kids are thinking about you might want to do in the future. Whatever that is, that's God calling you to do that so that you can help and serve uh, those people that God has placed into your lives. So that was pretty cool. I mean, obviously, that made an impression on me. I always remember that. And um, in, in, in looking at that. So doesn't matter. Martin Luther says, even the mom who changes a diaper 
is just as holy as the priest or the pastor who's preaching and administering the sacraments. He says, from God's perspective, there is no difference. They're all doing the work that God has called them to do. And what a thankful thing that is for you and for me. Now, how should we think of our calling as human creatures within the rest of God's creation? God cares about his creation and has called us to care uh, as it for his stewards. In other words, he wants us to be good stewards, managers, to take care of God's creation that he's given to us. We're not called to use it and abuse it. He's called us to take care of that. Now, what have you noticed in the fields lately in our community? What are they doing out there? Or what have they done? Where did all the corn go? It's been harvested. The beans are gone. I mean, they're, they're doing that. And they're up there, you know, whatever. I'm amazed that they got headlights on their tractors and doing all that kind of stuff. That, that would take place. When I was studying to be a pastor and went on my student pastor congregation, um, I was on a dairy farm in just south of Green Bay, Wisconsin. And this farmer, I mean, he, he loved the land that he was taking care of. And he took great care of it. He took great care of the cows that he had. It was amazing how, you know, these were his babies, per se, and how he was taking care of these cows so that they would produce milk and so that they could provide these nutrients um, for those who drank this milk. In fact, the milk that he used would made, went to make the cheese. Um, and things like that. So how cool that was. And guess what I got to do one time um, because I was the city boy, the vicar, studying to be a pastor from the city of Detroit, which I never got to do. I got to help bury a calf. He was having a little problems in the birth canal. So the farmer says, hey vicar, I got something for you to do. I'm thinking, it's 8 o'clock at night. What do you got me to do? He says, wear some old clothes. So, okay. So I went out, put the chain up, and started pulling. Now, when you pull a calf out, not only does the calf come out, but also everything else with it. So I was like baptized. <laughs> I went, oh, now I understand why you wanted me to wear that. <laughs> and he goes, I just want you to experience this. We do this quite often. He says, I'm not expecting you all the time. If you want to come out and help us, you're fine. But I just wanted you to experience this. And so got to do that. So what a great experience that was for me. At my day. And my wife took pictures. I think she was more <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> you know. And But when I got home, I she goes, oh no, you're taking those off. <laughs> and we're going to get washed in that as well. So um, that we are, we are to be good stewards of the gifts that God has given to us. Good managers. Uh, and with that. Now, what does it mean to be a steward? Well, we are God's servants, or to do as well, looking after his creation as he entrusted it to us. Part of the things that we do as God's people is that we're, we take care of our world, our earth. We don't use it and abuse it. We don't, let's just let population or uh, pollution and trash go over the place. We help take, make sure it's clean and we take care of that as well. Because this is the gift that God has given to us. And you can see here, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It is the Lord's. Like I said, I think the Apostles' Creed, the first article to say, I believe in God the Father, maker and owner of heaven and earth. He owns it all. It's his. It's not mine. I can't do it what I want. God says, here it is, and I want you to take care of it as well. Now, what are some of the stewardship responsibilities we have? We are to care for our bodies, to take care of them. You know, we should be healthy. We should do healthy things. We should exercise, things like that. Except on Thursday. You know, one of the things I have because of age and because I used to eat a lot of brown and served rolls. Let me know what brown and served rolls are. You would buy these packages and you just put them in the oven and you brown them. And my brother-in-law and I, we would eat, not a package, like three packages each. So there's like 12 or 15 rolls in there, which I blame for my diabetes. Because <laughs> you know what bread is? It's just sugar. Your body doesn't know any different. I used and abused. Now I can't go. I gotta watch what I eat. 
I got to take care of my body. Now, that doesn't mean I don't eat some rolls now and then. That doesn't mean I don't eat some pie or stuffing or mashed potatoes. But I can't do it all the time. I got to take care of this. As, as we learn, this is God's temple. God wants me to take care of that. And that, that we don't use and abuse it either. Letter B, we're to take care of our possessions and finances. Remember, it's all from God. Everything you have is a gift from God. All of it. If you think of it that way, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Let us see. We are to care for our neighbor both in their physical needs and in their needs to know the love of God and all that he has done for them in Christ Jesus our Lord. God blesses each and every one of us. We are stewards. We are managers. We are not owners of what God has given to us. And so God blesses us, and then if we see someone who is in need, and we've been blessed, then we should help provide for that person's need. Now we do that here at Emmanuel. We do it on Tuesday mornings through our food bank. There are people who come in from the community, and we help provide for them um, in doing that, which we're very thankful. And they are very thankful as well that we get to do that. Um, because there are times when we can give, and there are other times when we will receive, um, and that we have that. Which would lead us to really, the ultimate goal is so that all people would know that Jesus loves them. That Jesus died for them on the cross to save them from their sins. Ultimately, that's what God wants for all people. And so sometimes he will use those physical actions, whether, you know, oh, here's some food, or here's some help, so that people ask, why are you doing this? Because we love Jesus. Well, let me tell you about Jesus. But Jesus has done for me. That's what motivates us to love and care for one another because of God, how God took care of us as well. Letter D. We are to care for the church, church workers, and church property. Obviously. Wonderful building we have. Now, if you notice, sometime this week, coming up, we're going to paint this room. Yay! We're going to take care of it. We put new flooring in uh, down in the Sunday school rooms, down that hallway down there. Very thankful for that, that God has blessed us. We want to take good care of the building, this building that God has given to us. We want to take care of our church workers as well, providing for them. Your offerings that you give helps me to take care of my family, Pastor Stecker, all those people that work here in staff, all at Central Lutheran School. Those, those are, uh, that's how God helps provide uh, to take care of us so that we can do the work of the gospel, do the work that God has called us to do so that you can do your work doing that. And then obviously the church property as well, that we took, we take good care of that. We always want to be good neighbors um, here at Emmanuel. That we, that's why we cut the grass. I mean, they do a beautiful job um, in doing the maintenance outside and inside, that uh, we have that as well. Also, we are to care for the rest of God's creation, the earth, its bounty, and all of life. That's, you know, that we see that. They're all a gift from God. You know, that, that we do that. So we take care of all that. And obviously all the Bible passages that go along with that as well. So, uh, we have that. Now, any questions? You have any questions on anything? We have like 20 minutes. Ended up early today. Please stump the pastor. And I'll give it to Pastor Stump. <laughs> This is my last time I'm teaching you, so for uh, confirmation, it was a joy to do that with you. I know some of these things we quickly went through just to try to keep on schedule, uh, but uh, thank you very much. Uh, Pastor Hoover will be here the first Sunday in December, whatever Sunday that is, and he's going to start with the second article and go through the rest of the creed, and uh, he will go through the Lord's Prayer with you uh, as well as we go through that. All right? Well, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank the Lord and sing his praise for all that he's done for you. Now you can say it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Lord bless you.